Kerry Gray here at the Junilat Resort and today I'm going to be talking about how to build a golf swing in two simple steps. Let's get into it. Now, outside of the way that we hold the golf club and the way that we stand and set up, the general motion of the golf swing sometimes can get a little bit overcomplicated. Today, I'm just gonna be really talking about the movements of the body, not necessarily what we do in the setup or how we move the arms. So starting off with how the body needs to move. So if I was to place this golf club across my shoulders in this position here, let's say that this is relatively flat with the ground. Now, if I was playing golf from out in front of me, think about baseball or t-ball, if I was instructed to hit that ball as flat as I possibly can, uh, it would be in my best interests to swing this bat relatively level with the ground. My shoulders would turn relatively level with the ground. I would then swing through, once again, matching up that same plane. And then on the way through, once again, as around as we can with our shoulders going around. That would be if I was gonna hit the ball dead flat without too much height or hitting it down into the ground. So in golf, essentially what we are going to do is we're gonna make that same motion, but in golf, the ball's on the ground. So we have some tilt or some bend from our hips into this position. So just using that analogy that I just gave you then, the tee ball or the baseball's out in front. We're gonna swing this relatively flat with the ground, back through, and then around my body again, and that would send the ball flat as it left the bat. So in golf, once again, balls on the ground. So we're just gonna make that same little move and we're gonna feel that my shoulders are turning around my spine, just the same as they would if I was hitting that baseball shot. My shoulders turning around my spine. In golf, I'm tilted from the hips, so I'm just recreating that same motion. And when I do that, you can see that the end of the golf club here, it's just pointing slightly down towards the ground, okay? It's not pointing massively down towards the ground. Essentially, I'm just getting that same feeling I had in the backswing from getting my left shoulder pointing towards the target, except when I tilt from my hips, that golf club is going to point down for the ground. So what you can do is you can simply put a golf club across your chest like this, and then rehearse and make the feeling of getting the end of the golf club pointing down towards the ground. Now in the follow through, it's exactly the same with what the upper body's doing. So with what the club is doing, we also want the right end or the back end of this golf club to point down towards the ground as well. So if we had the grip on the trail side, if we went left shoulder down on the way through, we'd also get the right shoulder down. And then that would help me essentially stay in my posture throughout the golf swing. Now really one of the only big differences between the backswing and the follow through is how we move our body. So golf once again is an athletic movement and we need to ensure that our body is moving, rotating and extending towards where we wanna send the golf ball because that's how we're gonna get our power and speed. So if I'm just standing here and I only do my upper body, left shoulder down, right shoulder down, well when I do that, I'm not really gonna have that greatest success in striking that ball any which distance. So the extra part to this is that you need to feel something different on the follow through. So we're still getting our right shoulder down. However, the movement of the body, it's slightly different. Instead of just rotating or turning on the spot in the downswing and the follow through, what we need to focus on here is the same sensation as if you were doing an uppercut punch. Now, this is a simple analogy for a lot of complex movements, but essentially as I'm going from the top of my backswing, if you can imagine that the golf club is pointing down towards the ground and I was going to do an uppercut punch, I would get this fist swinging from a high to a low position back to a high position. If I was to put this club once again across my shoulders, you can see how that right shoulder would be pointing down. From the down the line view, left shoulder down to the ground, uppercut punch feeling, my right shoulder goes down to the ground as well. Now, let's look at that in regards to the lower body. As I then get to the top of my backswing and I start down, if I was going to create a lot of force, I would then reflex the knees, I would push into the ground, I would have some amount of shifting to the left side, and then I would get to a point, kind of around where my fist is about level with my hips, that I would then start pushing up off the ground to get a maximum amount of force delivered at the moment of impact. And essentially in golf, it's exactly the same. We're swinging to the top, my left shoulder's down, I'm feeling that pressing and that squatting down into the ground. And then from here, 
I'm extending up, working towards hitting that uppercut punch feeling. So once again, to the top, squat, uppercut punch feeling, and then that's gonna keep my right shoulder down. And you can see how my hips are pushed forward, extended, rotated, and my trail foot is up off the ground. Exactly what you would see if you're watching some players on TV. So from this angle, left shoulder goes down, pushing down into the ground, uppercut punch feeling, my body is moving forward and extending, my trail foot's off the ground, and my right shoulder is staying down. I found this to be a really easy way to think about how to move in the golf swing with two simple drills, club across your shoulders, learn how to get that side of the grip pointing out in front of you, then on the other side, do that down on the ground, left shoulder down, right shoulder down, and then simply add an uppercut punch feeling where your legs are flexing and moving down into the ground and then pushing up, finishing with your belt and your pelvis as high and forward as you can. When you do that, all your weight's gonna shift onto the lead side and that trail foot's gonna be up on its toe. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you've got any questions, please ask me down in the comment section. I'll get back to you straight away. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.